Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright. That there's Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. Uh, how, uh, uh, how are you feeling about summer? I'm, I'm feeling, well, it's a busier summer than I expected. Wow, right? I was <laughs> just talking to that. my wife about this this morning. Like, it feels like every hour is booked right. for yeah. us. Like, every yeah. hour. Well, and it was crazy because when I was scheduling for the summer, um, my son plays football and uh, I, I guess I should be excited about this. Um, but they started a week earlier than normal. And so usually they start like more towards the end of August, but this year they decided to start in the middle of August and he has to be, he has to be here for that. Right. And so I had to schedule any trips or anything that we were going to do basically all in June and July. Uh, and, uh, so here we are and, you know, we're at the end of July and I am tired. I need a vacation from my vacations exactly. and from these like weekends away because, you know, and I'm still working in between. And of so, course. yeah, it's been, it's been a busy summer. That is, that's absolutely it. I don't know how it happened, but uh, it, we've, we have made that transition to, I don't know if it's that the kids are of a certain age that they are busier and that, that is impacting like the whole family schedules, but it seems like uh, weekday, weekend, e- morning, noon, night, we've got something going on. Yep. Uh, so uh, this, that's why I'm so excited about this topic. You are going to uh, talk about how to handle <laughs> the overwhelmed summer schedule, particularly when you're struggling with ADHD. And that is something that I am personally very interested in. And I am too. I was, <laughs> I was rereading my notes. I mean, I'll be honest, like, cause I, I wrote these show notes. Um, gosh, it was probably a month ago before I was really in the summer yet. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was rereading it. And I'm like, okay, so what am I saying I need to do? Because I need to start doing it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right away. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, so, yeah, I think that, you know, if we're feeling it, I'm sure other people are feeling it as well. Um, and, you know, I think that there are a few warning signs to kind of be aware of if you are taking on too much. And this first warning sign is definitely me. Um, I am definitely more on the anxious, anxiety driven side. And so um, when you start feeling more anxious about your schedule rather than excited about it, you know that that's probably a warning sign. And I honestly had to take a step back because we were celebrating, um, my daughter's birthday and, you know, I was trying to plan a nice birthday party for her because she's only, I mean, she's just turning nine. And so for her, of course, birthdays are still so important and such a big deal and such an exciting time. And so I wanted it to be special, but we had planned a vacation right in the middle of planning it. So I had to do so much before we left on vacation. And then I had to like kind of scramble at the end to get it ready because we, you know, came home basically two days before the party. Right. And so I'm sitting there and I had to think to myself, okay, take a step back and don't get too caught up in the chaos or the stress of it and just enjoy the moment. It's her day. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be great. You know? Um, and I, and I have, I had to do that because I was, I was feeling more anxious than excited. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. This is, this is not the time and place for that. So, um, definitely be aware of that. Right. Totally. Really important. Um, Also, I think if you have a tendency to say yes to everything, if you're being asked to do things and your automatic response is to say yes, that's something to be aware of because then you're just adding more stuff on your plate, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, And I think another warning sign to to think about is... um, you know, if you do think you have the time, um, to do something, but then you realize that you don't, and you've already promised something to someone else. And this panic kind of starts to set in and you start worrying if you're going to disappoint someone, or are you giving up something that you would rather do? I mean, it's just all of that kind of, it, it kind of boils back down to that anxiety, um, feeling that, that many of us feel. Okay. So totally. Time is a funny thing with ADHD, right? Because for uh, most things always take longer than what we necessarily expect them to take. And so this is where someone with ADHD can definitely get in trouble because they think they have more time. They think they can squeeze one more thing to do. You know, I can do that. Sure, I'll do that. I can do that. And then all of a sudden that panic again feels comes in and says, okay, no, you can't. I don't know anything about that. (laughs) Yeah. 
you really only have 24 hours in the day and half of that time or eight hours of that time you should be sleeping not half my 24 hours are all 72 minutes long (laughs) yeah right okay so what do we do yes this is is important and this is what i had to reread today uh and this goes back to saying yes to everything just stop saying yes to everything right so simple start saying no um and and really how to do that is if someone asks you to volunteer or asks you if you want to like go camping this weekend with them or whatever don't or I, I guess not don't, but try to wait before you give a response. So pause for a moment <laughs> and let them know that you'll get back to them later, that you need to check your calendar, you need to check with your family, whatever it is. Um, but tell them you'll get back to them later. And it, what it does is it just frees you up that space so that you can actually take the time to go back and evaluate, is this something that's really important to me? Is it something that I really want to do? And is it something that I have time to do? And um, just, you know, waiting to say yes um, can make a big difference. And that can take some practice, too, because it's very easy to be impulsive and just say, oh, sure. Right. Which is what we talked about just a minute ago. This is it's the mandatory waiting period for scheduling. Yes. You have to have a mandatory waiting period. I love that. Yes. Just, yes, absolutely. Um, so when you do schedule meetings or events, um, say that something does come up and it is important to you, then what we want to do is avoid scheduling anything back to back. You got to give yourself a little bit of buffer room. Um, this allows you to be distracted because you know that that is probably going to happen. It allows for traffic. It allows um, basically just for you to not have that anxiety, panic feeling when you're rushing into a meeting, you know, from another meeting, because you need to have that little breathing space to kind of, you know, gather yourself back together and, okay, now where am I, you know, center yourself, where am I going? Well, and that that ends up being one of the the biggest complaints you hear from people who, you know, who work the office job, right? Right. Is, uh, oh my gosh, we have meetings and then we have meetings about meetings and they're back to back and I never have time to breathe. Yes, yes. And, you know, on my own personal experience, I've learned it the hard way is that if I do schedule, um, I have in the past scheduled clients back to back. So, you know, like an eight o'clock, nine o'clock and 10 o'clock. Yeah. And what I have found is that the eight o'clock, great, you know, things are moving along. Um, nine o'clock, it, it, it's pretty good. Uh, but that third person and I probably shouldn't admit this but that third person I'm like out of breath I'm like okay I need to and it's not from talking but it's just my brain hurts right right, right. you've been in these conversations and and um you're really thinking and it's like I didn't give myself enough time to to regroup and so I've learned the uh, the hard way that I need to at least have 15 minutes in between appointments like I can't go just back to back back to back you know you you know oh go ahead well uh, well, I was just going to add you know I think there's a there's another piece to that for me, which I learned from a, a dear friend and therapist. Uh, he, you know, he's a, a psychotherapist, and he had the same uh, the same comment. He said, you know, when I first started out, I realized, you know, I I just I need more clients. I've got to pay back my medical bills. He's now been doing this for 12, 15 years, and he says if it's the challenge is taking a client right after another is okay, but by the time you hit that third client, you have forgotten what you needed to do as an outcome of the first session, you know, in in terms of just making notes, in terms of whatever. And it takes 10 to 15 minutes to just sit down and say, you know what, I owe, this is part of what I owe that last meeting or that last session or that last client is to sit down for 15 minutes and and document what we talked about so I know what we have to do next. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And that ends up being super important. If you are in a culture of meeting, 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 you are doing a disservice to the early meetings by not scheduling time to decompress and figure out what is an outcome that you have to, you have to take on. You just, you just forget. Yes, absolutely. Great point. Great point. So yes, that's, you know, scheduling those meetings, not back to back or like, like you said, giving our, ourselves a little bit of buffer room is, is going to be really important. Right. And, um, that's one I'm taking to heart. Believe me. <laughs> 
um, subtracting from your schedule. Now, you know, this, this is something that you can do. And I know that sometimes people have a hard time with it because they may feel a little guilty if they've already said yes to something. Um, but you know, I, I think that sometimes we do have to do that and it's okay. If you, if you're really overwhelmed and you're really feeling, you know, the chaos outside and inside, and you need, just need some time to be at home, it's okay to say no, even if you said yes before. And I have a perfect, perfect example. I was working with a client and uh, she had just moved to her new home and um, she didn't have a lot of time to actually settle in yet. She had, you know, there were still lots of boxes around and, and, and she has ADHD and she, um, it was struggling with some things at work too. And so there was just a lot of stuff on her plate and, there was a weekend where her parents or maybe her in-laws or something, I don't know, they wanted her to go to like some lake cabin and, you know, spend the weekend with them. And she had already said yes. And then she actually on her own backed out and said, no, you know what? I think it'd really be best if I just stayed home. I need to, I need to move into my house. I need to have those two days just to, you know, get some things settled. And and that's okay. That's great. I mean, that was probably better for her mental health than actually going away. You know, as wonderful as a cabin on a lake would be, she would have just been sitting there stressing about everything that was back at home. Totally. You know, it wouldn't have done her any good. And so I think that coming back and really making that decision of what's best for me right now and for my family, you know, it's okay to, to back out sometimes. Well, so. and that's the that's the vacation from the vacation, you know, we talk about. It's not, right. that's when it's not funny. Like there's a real impact. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay, so my last tip is something that we have talked about a lot when it comes to time management, and that's that weekly and daily review of your schedule, um, making sure that you write out all of your appointments on your calendar. Um, I've always recommended that you only use one calendar, and basically why we're doing this is that we just want to have kind of a heads up or a preview of the week, and I think that when you do that, then you sort of plant that seed that it's going to be a really busy week, and this is what I need to prepare for. Um, rather than being in the middle of the week and feeling like, you know, life is falling apart because it's so busy and you weren't really expecting it. Right. So yeah. as much as you can expect what's coming ahead, I think is great. And then again, in the morning, you know, look at it the, at, like on a Sunday or Monday and then every day in the morning, what, what's on my agenda today? What, what do I need to do today that I don't want to forget? So you do your reviews in the, on Sunday evening and in the mornings. Yeah, I always do kind of a weekly review on Sunday, and, and, and it is not a weekly review that we have talked about, like, with GTD, right, uh -huh. with with um, David Allen's right. weekly review. It's not all of that. I'm not checking, e or I'm not, like, looking into my email and all that. All I'm doing is looking at my calendar and looking at what is ahead of me Yeah. Um, and getting a sense a visual sense because I use iCalendar and everything's color coded. So I know if it's work related, if it's home or if it's personal. And so I can see green, red, and blue, and I can see exactly just what is ahead. Um, yeah. and then now because I'm in school, I have an orange for education. So sure. I can see what classes I'm taking and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, and then I look again on Monday morning and and look and see, okay, what's what am I doing today? Yeah, you know, I I started and I you know I don't know if there's what the benefit is. I there was some, um, there was some I can't remember is it Hemingway or somebody who said you know always stop writing when you have something else to say, right? Stop when you know what's coming next. And so I started doing my my daily review at the end of the day uh, because I'm I'm usually sitting down kind of figuring out what I did and mm -hmm. entering, you know, make sure I have all my billable hours in my system, make sure all my meetings are documented, et cetera, and, and then do my review for, hey, what, what, is, what am I doing tomorrow? And the reason I started doing that, well, I, I started doing that for two reasons. First, uh, because I never want to be surprised first thing in the morning. Um, oh, right. And I, I run into this, this challenge where I wake up, my alarm goes off, I come down, and the first thing, slam, you have an 8 o'clock meeting. And I had forgotten it. And so uh, I, I started that way, uh, just looking at what is the scope of stuff that I have committed to for tomorrow. But the other reason is, uh, man, I feel like I process pretty well while I'm sleeping, 
Oh, and okay. Y- you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, if there's right. a creative project I have to jump into tomorrow, then I sort of plant the seed the night before. And then when I'm sleeping, usually I'll wake up with kind of a fresh new idea of something that, that I'm going to need to work on. And that, that has worked well for me. And I, I you know, um, I, I know that, um, you know, I, I, there's certainly no, no right or wrong, but I just want to plant that out there that, that doing that review, I think there's something to the subconscious uh, uh, prep work that you do without thinking you're doing it. Well, and you know, you bring a good point because like, especially in our business, I am assuming you too, Pete, that you're not always consistent with when you start in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. And so there, and and I work with a lot of people on the East coast and there's a three hour time difference. Mm -hmm. And so there are people where I'm starting at seven o'clock in the morning because to them it's only 10 or it's 10 and it's seven for me. And I'm an early person anyway, so that, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, but you make a really good point that that's not all the time because the very next day, my first appointment not may not be until 10 o'clock in the morning. So just knowing that, and I, I, I know the first time I had the seven o'clock morning appointment, I kept thinking, don't forget about the meeting. Don't forget about the meeting because <laughs> it wasn't, so it was so unusual for me to have it that early. And so, um, I think you bring up a really valid point, especially if you're a little inconsistent with, you know, when you start. Yeah, it's I, yeah. it's just worth considering, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of just that that prep work for me. And I think for the for the uh, you know, I'm, I'm I don't know, it, it has helped me in in dealing with. Uh, some of the more ADHD tendencies that I have to, you know, anything I can do to give myself a head start. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, so. And that's what all, all of this is about, yeah. is trying to, to do best for you and your schedule and making that anxiety and chaos go away. That's so, right. That's very right. good. What else you got? That's it. That's it? That's it. Fantastic. Uh, I This is really useful for me. I'm so glad you you put this topic on the calendar. I think this is, hopefully it's useful for others too. Absolutely. Uh, don't too. You don't need to be overwhelmed. Let go of the stress this that's summer. Right. Let the sun feed you. <laughs> That's the trick. I All love right. the sun. I love the sun. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody, you can find out more about the show at TakeControlOrganizing.com. You can subscribe for free uh, in iTunes or Stitcher Smart Radio or, uh, you know, any place finer podcasts are served. Um, and uh, you can even listen to the show right online on our website if you if you want to do that. Uh, yeah, you can find us on uh, Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook, all of those at Take Control ADHD. Uh, and you should. You should join us for the discussion there. It'd be good to have you. I think that's it. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>